Well, good morning. Today, we're doing something a little bit different on the channel. We're actually going to take a break from food plots and all that, which we kind of just been waiting for some rain. Fourth of July weekend right now, and we finally got the rain. Um, but I've been really busy in the shop working on heads. Got a deer in the drying process, a bear in the painting process and one deer home and waiting for one more form and then i have a mink to do but today we're going to switch it up a little bit and i'm going to do a video on bringing high six back to life i came from the mud there's dirt on my hands strong like a tree there's roots where i So I don't know if you guys can tell uh, by the footage or not, but I'm all dusty. I've been doing a lot of the like kind of grunt work, I guess, and I'm just going to fly over it real quick for you. Um, it kind of makes a really dusty mess and didn't want the camera in here uh, during that process. So been doing a lot of the leg work on this already got the mount i use paper mache to add the skull cap to it um, just to kind of help smooth it out and give it some sort of a you know form i guess a lot of guys use clay a lot of guys use oh bondo there's just all kinds of different things and there's probably about 5,500 YouTube channels that you guys can watch and videos that you can watch and it seems like everybody does it a different way There is no exact way your end goal From the artist perspective is to make it look like an alive deer at the end of the day, so I try to start to go in and um, Enhance some of the features that are already in the mounts. I don't know if you guys can see very well, but uh, I'll go in like on his shoulders here. I actually, there was already creases in here. I went in and deepened those and keep in mind they look really extreme and really in depth right now, but you'll have skin and hair in there eventually and they won't look so dramatic, but they'll, they'll be there, which is really important, I think. I did the same thing along the shoulders, especially a form like this. I really deepened those two shoulder points, left these kind of sharp in there and flattened out and dug this out to kind of give him that. If he's down low, I feel like his shoulders would be would be up a little bit higher than that part of his back. So went in and dug that out. And then another thing I really like to do is his neck. I like to go in and dig out into here and fade it out into this bigger muscle. Same thing along these muscles. I really, really like when forms have those kind of like jack rock muscles here. And I got a form right here, I'll show you guys how it looks when it's done um, and then this is actually a wall pedestal so he'll be sitting on the wall kind of like this I like to practice new techniques on my own animals versus a, a potential clients uh, animal as of right now I'm only doing like immediate friends and family um, I'm not licensed so I have to uh, I can't charge anything legally to, to do this so I don't really take a big you know, clientele due to the fact that I'm not making money on it. So um, I got to do a mink and that will be the last step of my actual uh, license process to get the mammal par portion of it done. So i um, really excited about that. Excited to turn this into a little bit of a little bit of a profit up for me. So um, but anyway, I like to go in, add as much detail as I can and really try to make these animals look alive. And again, like I said, there's a million different ways to do this and every single taxidermist does it a different way. And again, it's a common goal, make it look like an alive deer at the end of the day. So I've done all the grunt work. I've done all this. This kicks up a lot of dust. You got to carve out the mouth. I've done that. Um, where the, uh, right in front of the eyes, they have a gland right here. You got to dig that out to give room for the skin to go. His nose, you got to dig that out. Um, so yeah, now we're at the part where I just have to go over it and kind of give it a good once over roughing up of this uh, form so that the hide, when that's done stretching, um, 
and I apply the glue, it'll have some sort of structure to help bond the skin to it. So um, I'm probably going to be bouncing around a lot because this is my first time ever trying to explain this while I'm doing it. And again, I'm still a novice. I've only done, I don't know, four or five bears and maybe four or five, six deer at this point in my career. So uh, still very novice. Um, I know there's going to be other ways, tools, again, one of those things, everybody likes a different tool for different things. Um, so yeah, this isn't, this is far from a how to, this is going to be a, just follow me along while I try to bring high six back to life. I've done most of my leg work on the hide as well, as far as like patching holes and that kind of stuff. I have to, uh, once it stretches for a little while, I got to go in and do the ears. I'll show you guys how I do that. And then I have, a. Uh, I was waiting for it to thaw a little bit more. Um, I got a little few cuts and nicks and scratches that I'm going to super glue together. Um, but right now it's on my, my makeshift hide stretcher. They do make like an hy a hydraulic one, but it's like $600. So this is all from stuff that I have laying around the house. Uh, this is what I normally boil my skulls in this pot. Filled it with a bunch of sand and dirt, probably about 20, 25 pounds of dirt. Attach it to uh, a piece of wood, slide the hide over a piece of wood. Another piece of wood in here, two loops on the end of the rope, and I let it stretch. And this one, this one's stretched in probably about 10 minutes, about a half an inch. So all this is doing is making it easier to get it over the form um, and to work with, basically. So it's not super, super tight against the form. Because I, I tend to get a little bit bigger of a form than a, versus the exact size or a little bit smaller. Just to really make sure I get a deer, you know, looking big and swell. So this is my, my baby, my high stretcher. Okay, so now, high's been stretching for a little bit. I gotta do a few more steps before we get the ears done. Um, I have some nicks and cuts and slices and dices in the ears themselves, as well as around the lips. So I'm gonna use Zappa Gap, which is the best to throw on the ground. And then I'll just use these little clamps and just kinda glue the seam and put them together, so. That's what we're about to do right now. So you gotta turn them inside out. You can see some of the holes I've already fixed. Did that off camera because it's kind of boring and tedious, but we'll sew. We'll have plenty to sew on the neck still. Um, bullet holes. Um, this I think was cut in the tanning process. Any little hole is going to increase in size. Um, as it starts to dry, it stretches. So like a hole like this, where it's on the face, I'm probably not gonna sew that. I'm probably gonna try to actually um, glue that together. So that'll probably be one of the first ones that I do. Another thing I do while I'm doing this is I'll uh, get my knife and start thinning out around the eyes. I don't need all this skin. I only need a little bit to tuck, so I'll start getting rid of some of that while, while things dry. Out of this nose cartilage I don't need. All it does is take up space inside the form. And you're just checking as you go to make sure you're not taking away too much? Yeah, I just like to flip it around and try to get an idea of where where I can pull from. Make sure I'm not taking too much or just gets my bearings back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this, you know, little nicks like this that are in the nose, that's fine. When I have it, um, once it dries, I'll go in and fill it in with a two-part epoxy anyway. So I'll fill that seam, you won't even see it. 
if it was down into here, you know, coming out of, like this will still be in the nose. Let's see if I can get it kind of set up. So that'll still be in the nose. If that crack was coming down into here, I'd have to address it, but where it's gonna be mm -hmm. kind of hidden anyway, that epoxy and some paint will, will fill that in fine. Just make sure your tannery always gives you more than enough material. I'd rather cut material off than not have it at all. A lot about taxidermy is tedious, but worth it in the end. This one I'm actually going to fix. See how it kind of comes out of the nose a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and glue that. You can't really sew that kind of a, this kind of an area. Mm -hmm. If you were to sew that, you'd have big stitches sticking out. And those are harder to hide versus this glue. So I'll glue that one. Zap a gap again. Zap it a gap again. My cap always gets glued onto it. Zaps all gaps. Zaps the gaps big time. See a lot of this will get tucked into the form and I'll cut a lot of this off too. I don't need that much lip, but this one that'll be on the outside of the form. So that'll, that one will need to get fixed. And it's way easier to fix this stuff now versus going, oh, I'll just put it together and, and, uh, you know, fix it with epoxy or whatever. It's way easier when this stuff's soft to do it now. Versus waiting. See how our ears look. Usually I have slices and dices I have to fix in the ear. Yep, there's one there. This one on this one. I don't like to fix these type. Um, this way, I'll fix them the right side out, I guess. Just that cone section? Yeah. Because it actually, if you saw how that hair popped out of it, it's a lot harder to get that hair to come back in. Mm. Versus doing it this way, where the hair will want to naturally fall out. But I like to see what I got by turning it inside out first. And you can see that's my my problem child. So I'll get a couple clamps for that one probably. And then it's way easier to glue. This way. Way easier that way than trying to keep the hair in and it's just way easier. <laughs> Biggest thing I think that I've learned over the last couple of years doing this a little more full time is uh, when I would first do it I'd just like really rush and really really try to get it done as fast as I can because really in theory this is the, the whole time this is out it's drying. So you do have some sort of a uh, time frame to get it on, but if you get it on the form, you can you can actually uh, throw a bag over it and just keep the air off of it, and it will slow the, the drying process down. But just taking your time, one step at a time. So I'll finish gluing this stuff up, and then uh, we'll move on to doing the ears.
I'll show you how I do those. I do Bondo, not ear liners. Again, just the method that I learned, so it's the method that I use. So now we're getting ready to do the ears, which again, like I said, I do the Bondo method, so it's just a two-part all-purpose putty, um, same as you'd use for like a truck or something like that. Um, but they also do ear liners. Um, I've never had great luck with these. I learned how to do ears with this method. So the ear liners have been always been a little bit of a challenge for me. I have tried them in the past and just didn't really love them. So I don't use them that much anymore. Um, pretty much exclusively just use uh, two part epoxy. I just keep spare pieces of cardboard to mix it on. And yeah, we'll get after. So <clears throat> I like to kind of get the ears somewhat turned out and create a pocket for that Bondo to go in once I mix it. And I'll be able to work it around with my hands. But this stuff, you don't, you really want to try to avoid getting this on the hair as much as possible. I need tongue, tongue ones of these, not popsicle sticks, but all I have are popsicle sticks, so. I have tongue ones. You do? Yeah, they're in the house. <sighs> I shouldn't know, I shouldn't know. Is this a pre mixed bondo? Nope. You have to mix it? Mm -hmm. huh. Two part. Isn't all bondo two part? Or am mm -hmm. I just silly? Yeah. yeah. I just know what my That's dad That's probably a little bit too much for one, <clears throat> for one year. I do one a year at a time. Sometimes you add too much of the curing and uh, the hardener and it sets too fast before you get your ear form <coughs> formed how you want it. So I always just do one at a time. I really don't know how much of this you're supposed to add. They make some that have a like a red or a blue. Hmm. I like that one better because you can actually see how well you've got it mixed. And just start glopping it in there. It's already starting to. Hmm, so cool. And that side, and then we'll get some on this side. Then I'll take my gloves off so I don't get any of that on the hair. Turn the ear back inside out and just start moving it around. And this is where you're going to find, see I got a, my uh, glue one didn't really work that good there. So I'm not going to push super hard. I will be able to clean that up though. Get it right up in there. So you can feel it. You can feel it moving around. You can feel air pockets, stuff like that forming. See, so that slit didn't that slit didn't stick very good at all. But, Do you think it's because uh, the hide's still damp? Probably because it's a it's still a little bit wet. And then I like to just take plastic bags and get those <clears throat> down in the ear canal. to help keep that shaped and then <clears throat> and I just kind of keep an eye on it and as it starts to cure I can really it'll start to hold its shape better but it's just kind of a waiting game adjust it wait adjust it wait and then eventually it sets Right now, are you thinking about the like shape or like how it's going to be, or are you just start making it look like an ear? Making it look like an ear right now, 
and then as it sets more because right now it's still so loosey-goosey mm -hmm. um, so I'm not super worried about it until okay. it starts to set more can you feel it getting harder yeah you'll feel it once it's really really setting I always use this as a as a tester too just to look to see it's still oh, still pretty soft that's a good idea but you'll feel it you'll feel the ears like they'll be very warm to the touch once it really starts to kick oh because it's chemical mm -hmm. gotcha and i don't use a lot of um i don't use a lot of the hardening agent because i like to have the time to really set it i don't want to be in a rush and then it just cure because it can cure too fast sometimes i think well, that ear's starting to kick. I still, it's still soft, but it's, it's warm. The uh, stuff's starting to get stiffened. Yep. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. So now I feel confident enough to move on to the next one. My initial when I first put it in is not to make it look like an ear at all. It's just to get that worked into every crevice that I can. I know for like uh, competitions and stuff, I think the guys probably use, um, mostly use ear liners, but I just don't have much experience with them. Um, Therefore, I'm not very good at it. Okay, so our ears are pretty much done. Now I'm going to put this guy back on the stretcher while I uh, while I work on the form a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> form prep. Like I said and talked about earlier, we uh, we did a lot of that already as far as like the major work. So now this little shiny coat that it's got on it. We gotta try to knock that down. Two items I use for that. Uh, 60 grit or 40 grit. No, yeah, 60 grit sandpaper. And this. It's a tool that uh, Mackenzie Taxidermy makes for just basically roughening up the surface so that the glue and the hide have something to kind of form to. And then I don't know if I showed you guys this yet or not, but the back of a wall pedestal there's a couple different ways you can do it you can fold the fur over and just glue it to this or they have the tuck method I've never done any of this before but the tuck method seems to make the most sense to my brain so you just go in and make sure you give yourself plenty of room to tuck the hide when you come over and then uh, there'll be black felt here once um, once I'm done with it but and once it dries so You'll be able to connect to here with staples like you would a regular mount, but in here you can't really do that, so you have to tuck it, and then you'll be able to hide the seams and stuff with the felt. So, just did all that stuff because it's time consuming, but we'll just roughen this thing up, get clay work done in the clay areas, and the eyes in, and all that fun stuff. Biggest thing I've learned, I guess, with this, learned a lot, honestly, but um, there's not a whole lot that you can't fix. So whether it's holes, uh, seams, I had my brother-in-law's bear, which was one of the first animals I ever did for anybody. And he shot it through the legs and kind of blew its chest apart. And it was just such fine pieces of skin left that I really couldn't sew it or anything. So I had to cut his whole bear's chest off, like right at the base of the neck, take the fur from another area, it's butt pretty much, and re-sew it together and you can't even tell. So it's, uh, I'll run into stuff I can't fix eventually, but as of right now, it seems like everything has some sort of a, an option to, to make it happen. I'll go in and do my eyes first. 
I like to just kind of score this area and then area for those to stick to and then I like to take a silver sharpie and try to find what are you looking for? I'm looking for his actual his actual like pupil itself really really hard to see that yeah, way so as I'm putting them on I can get them kind of lined up right gotcha. then I'll take a big old glob of clay and fill in the back of the eye oh the back is hollow mm-hmm and then on these particular eyes there's a side that's a little more of a point that's going to be your front and then I just cram them in there and then try to line my pupil level If anything, I like my pupil just a hair down. So instead of being perfectly level, it's just a tip down. Mm -hmm. But it depends on what look you're going for too. You can do different things with them to get them to, to roll differently and sit differently if you want them to be like looking to the side or whatever. Um, it's really kind of up to, to you as the artist and what, what look you're going for. So we got to build up the eyebrow up top and down low. And give them that kind of this kind of if you come look at this deer he's got kind of that shelf he's got kind of that shelf that he has so you can kind of create some sort of um, detail in it and I don't get super crazy with it some guys will get all their detail in right now I wait till the hides on and then I can kind of go from there with it I don't know where I saw this on a YouTube channel once this guy this is how he did it and it just kind of clicked with me so he just kind of builds it up a little little by little I'll get it kind of smoothed out but I don't spend a whole lot of time on it yet till I get the hide on and I can really shape it how I want. But I'll get the basic shape of it. Is this just to help it stick? Yeah, it's just uh, kind of when I go to press the skin into there, it can really like seat good. As something to kind of help keep it shaped instead of just the hard backing. I don't know if this helps or not, but we do it. In my mind, it it helps. And I know I'm taking some of the depth away by doing this, but I'm also able to really push that skin into those seams and get it seated good. It feels better, I guess, when I'm doing it. Mm. And again, just as I tuck those lips into here, it just kind of, it's just going to help hold those in place. Basically all this is doing. This is just like makeup. You put on the eyeliner and the contours. Yep. <laughs> just like it. Just like it. Again, I'm not super worried about my detail because I, I can smooth it out once the hide's on.
All right, that is the uh, the rough clay portion of this show. Now I'm gonna get some glue, throw some glue on it, and then we can start putting them together. So this next part is just gonna be gluing. All I'm using Mackenzie High Pace. I'm sure there's cheaper alternatives out there than this. This stuff's not super expensive, but I'm gonna do basically the majority of the base of the neck um, up to like around the chin. The face I'll do after, and then back here I'll be able to do after before I start sewing. The only spot that I really keep off of with the glue is the exact spot that I'm going to be sewing. Um, I tend to find that if I'm, I put glue down right there, it gets on the hair, as I'm threading the needle through, it gets on that, pulls it up through. So um, I try really hard to keep off of that seam. All right, so your hides, you wanna to try to keep out of that glue as much as possible. This is why I don't worry about getting super detailed with this clay. Cause if it's tight, it's gonna, it's going to pull. So two types of hide stretchers or pullers that I use is actually the same thing that you use to scrape up the form with. That works really good for moving and doing some fine detail stuff. And then this big guy here helps you grab and pull stuff pretty good if you need them. And this is the point where I can attach my skull plate and do some more clay work around my ears to add ear butts to it. So I'll get the uh, get my rack. Pre-drilled, pre-planned. Yep, already been. Uh, I just want to make sure that I hit the same holes I did when I first made this, so that way it um, it lines up right and it doesn't kick off in a weird direction. And I won't go crazy with them until I get them all in. And the problem I'm going to have with high six is if you can tell right here versus this side, he's got no real actual burr. So I'm going to have to zap a gap along here to help keep that from pulling off. Same with, well, on it, both of them I will honestly, but this side more so than that side. I don't know if this was an injury side on him or something because it is a little bit like his pedicles different. So I don't know if he was 
injured at one point in his life. If you over tighten this in this situation, you will break, break your pet, uh, break the skull plate. And again, this is something that I just kind of glob, glob it in there and then I will reshape once it's all sewed up and everything. At this point, I got them pretty close to uh, where I want them as far as distance back goes. So this is where I'm actually going to sew him up completely. And then, um, then that way, once he's all sewed, because a lot of times these will, this will end up pulling into place properly. So uh, I'll sew them and then I'll, I'll work on getting any wrinkles and crinkles out that, that might be there. But I got to pull his face off, glue up in and around the head put the face on and then uh, go from there. All this needs to be sewed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sew um, the antler around the antler burrs back. I could do a, uh, a Y cut. So I'll sew to this point, then I'll sew to this point around the antler burrs and glue them. And then I'll do the stretch around the, the back of the neck. And then at that point, I can kind of start putting it together and getting crinkles out and all that kind of stuff. So this is a pretty big needle, right? And pretty big thread. Pretty big thread, decent sized needle. I like to use this curved one. Oops, hold on. Yep. I like to use this curved one. There are a bunch of different ones you can use. This just seems like it's worked the best for me. That's so cool. It's probably my least favorite part of the whole process. Why? It's just time consuming. Oh, I can see that, yeah. It's like kind of like a finishing step, but a very time consuming finishing step, so it's not that much fun. It's kind of rewarding though to see it like yeah. come together. And I'll go back in and I'll zap a gap in the rent. You can see how it's kind of still kind of loose. Mm-hmm. So I'll zap a gap all that, keep it tight. If I have to go in with putty and paints and stuff, I can do that after too. Um, but yeah. I got the burrs all glued up and sewed up. Now I just gotta run down, do a strip down the back of the neck. And he will be together-ish. Always give yourself plenty of material to work with. Nothing's worse than getting like halfway done and realizing you don't have enough to finish the sewing. How does it feel to be um, mounting your own deer? It's cool. It, uh, um, I don't know. Do you feel any different about it? Like less pressure and more pressure than doing somebody else's or? You I, always, I always feel more pressure doing my own deer because I'm usually doing stuff I'm not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. 
like I've never done a mount like this before. Everything's really the same up until this part. So there's always that pressure. I'd rather mess my stuff up than someone else's. Yeah. Um, it's rewarding to do your own. I bet. Is this the first time you've done your own deer? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I did one last year, but it wasn't my hide. Oh. Guy canceled. So I just took an old set of rack and already had the money all invested in everything, so I just made it work. Just to practice mostly. Yeah. So we are all sewed up. Now I'm just kind of going in and trying to get the ears how I want them, which I don't really know how that is yet. So I'm going to leave them like this for now. I kind of like when they're doing something a little bit different from each other, they're not both doing the same exact thing. <clears throat> now I just got to get the high pulled around and all that. So a lot of manipulating. And what'd you do with the ears? They have pins on them now. Yep, they just have metal rods in them to hold them in place. Simple. Simple. I like it. Oh, you got a new tool. Yep, lip ducking tool. Good name. I don't know what the actual name of it is. Oh, I thought that was actually it, and I was like, hmm, makes sense. And there's clay in there, that's why it's so malleable. Mm -hmm. Mal Now for me, I am a drastic overpinner. Which means I pin way too much. But I don't want my stuff going anywhere. So all along the lift line for sure, so you don't want that to move. Yeah, and then once we do the eyes, we'll do that as well there. And then any like crease detail special thing, mm -hmm. I'm sure, right? Yeah. So mouth and nose is done. Now we're moving on to the eyes. And again, just going to try to kind of get everything somewhat 
stretched and put in the right areas. Still haven't decided what I want to do with my ears yet. I don't love how I have them right at the moment, but we can change that, no problem. So, the eyes, I'll zoom you in. Now, you just tuck like we did the nose. Starting to get the eyes kind of how I want them, um, but I got a lot of like tedious little tweaks and all that kind of stuff going on right now. So what I'm going to do is just shut the camera off, start working, and then I'll bring you guys back when everything's kind of somewhat situated in, an, in a, another point that I can show you guys. But I'm going to be messing with the ears a lot, the nose a lot, the eyes a lot, and just a lot of like back and forth little teeny tweaks and adjustments until I get it how I want it. So see you in a little bit. Getting a little bit frustrated with the eyes, so I'm gonna take a break with them. I just, I get too, uh, too hung up trying to make them perfect, so I'm gonna take a break from them for a little bit and start pinning some of this deer down. Some of those areas that uh, I wanna bring out. Muscle tone. All this is going to do is help prevent what they call drumming. So as this, as this dries and stretches around the form to prevent these creases where I want that muscle tone to just be a flat, hollow surface, you pin it and then as that dries, it, it helps dry it to the form. So that's all this is doing. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we can start to... Um, get rid of some material. So, first things first, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here. And I can staple to right about here. This part's nothing fancy. It's just a like a medium grade kind of a stapler. You can use an air gun stapler as well if you want. Um, but I'm just gonna start kind of going around the wood part of it and stapling that. Now, with this part of the hair, at least the one that's uh, up against the wood, we can get rid of that and cut that off because we don't need it anymore. I don't want to cut too much because I'm still, I still got to mess with the, uh, this part of it. So I don't want to cut too, too much of it yet. And this part for me is when it actually starts to kind of look like a mount. It's cool. This part is <clears throat> brand new to me. So I'm just going to try to make sure that I give myself enough hide to tuck 
in here. So luckily, I actually have a little bit of a red line. So I'm going to go beyond that. Okay, we're really doing it. We're getting uh, all tucked up in there. It's looking really good. I'm going to uh, shut the camera off. I only got like 25 minutes left on this battery and it's my last battery. So I will, uh, I'll regroup once we're completely done with the putting together of high six. Well, just like that, he is done and in the drying process. I'll leave him like this probably for at least a week, depending on how humid it is. Uh, this deer over here to my right, which I don't know if he's might be a little bit sticking into the frame. Um, that one took a, quite a while to, to, uh, to dry because it was so humid. So um, every day, every morning, every night, I'm out here checking to make sure things aren't moving too much, eyes aren't sagging, lips aren't pulling out, that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm very, uh, again, I'm a novice, so I'm very particular about how I'm doing things and making sure that everything's going to hold up and be good. So this is... Uh, this is a deer we call High Six. I wanted to mount him for you guys to kind of help, kind of do full circle if you guys watched the, the hunt from this last year. If not, I'll link it in the description below. Um, very emotional hunt. Very, very important deer to me. And I'm doing some cool stuff with, uh, with mounting him that I've never done before. And I uh, wanted to bring you guys along, which I've never done that before either. I don't know if I'll do that all the time. I'll be honest with you, this kind of stuff, taxidermy, is the only thing I really have outside of work and then filming YouTube videos. Um, it's really the only thing that I have that I can just like shut my brain off, put music on and just kind of zone out and work. So if it takes off for some weird reason, I might do it more often, but if not, um, it'd probably just be once in a while, probably just my deer kind of a thing. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I know it's kind of a long one. I hope you found it somewhat interesting. Um, hope you had some good information. If you have any questions, let me know. This, there, there is going to be a part two to this video. And that's going to be all of the finish work. So um, right now we're going to let them dry. It'll be a couple weeks and then we'll come at you with a part two and uh, finish them up, get them pretty, and put them on the wall. When I was a kid, my dad used to say, don't let anything stand in your way. Stand tall, think clear. Don't let them see you ain't to fear.